Praise the Lord, everyone. Here we are again, another Friday. And thank you for joining us for our Walk in the Word with Elder Milton Andrew as he brings you a wonderful Bible study today. And the title of that Bible study is going to be, When You Look and See Nothing, God Says, Look Again. It's going to be just wonderful. He's going to give us a lot of information as what we can do when we don't know really what to do. And before we move on to that, I just want to say a little word about this past week. A lot's going on around us. Our elections are happening. But I want to remind everyone that regardless of who sits in the White House, it's not about the man. It's all about who holds the White House. And God's purpose will be fulfilled regardless of who's sitting in that room. So don't be caught up in a lot of petty arguments with people about why somebody didn't win or why someone did win. Put it aside and let them know that God will take care of all of this. Because we were reminded this week when we lost a, a pastor who was a wonderful man of God, spent over 40 years teaching us about prophecy, the Word of God, and what it says about what we should do in such a time as this. He's taught us about the uh, perilous times that we're in now where we see hate and division and death and destruction and a plague that has come upon this land. He's taught us that we must look around us and not be fooled by the enemy and caught up with a lot of negativity. God knows what's going on. He's not surprised by any of this. And also about the end of age that is to come shortly. We need to be studying our word, reading about Revelation and Matthew and Daniel and all the things that God has put there for us to prepare us for this time. Not to be frightened, but to have faith and to know that he's going to order our steps if we will follow him and not the news and the people that claim to know what they're doing. We have to rely on the Lord. So I invite all of you to do what we must do to make a difference, and that is always to just pray. Prayer is powerful. Prayer will answer the questions that we have, give us the strength that we need to go forward and to be a blessing to those around us. So I invite all of you to pray for our nation, pray for this land, pray for our friends and family, that we will all get ourselves ready so that our salvation will be assured. That's what we're supposed to do. Take God's word out to as many as we can. And with this weekly Bible study, we ask you to share with your friends, invite them to join us. You may not be able to convince them to hear the word of God, but sometimes a different voice can make a difference. People listen, but we want to get as many people involved with God's word as we can. This program is not for any fame or fortune. It's simply to follow God's direction and try to be a blessing with an understanding of his word. So I invite you to continue to listen to us, to share with your friends. Pray for our nation, Lord. Pray. That's all we can do and have faith. Our teacher will come now and bring that wonderful lesson. God says, when you look and see nothing, look again. Thank you and God bless you for this week coming up. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I feel like making an altar call right now. Is there one for my baby, my queen, certainly laid down the word and just so smoothly, so with much class, told us about what God is doing with us in this last and evil day. I see you, Pastor Diane Washington, one of my guests at our home who's here to look after her brother. We praise God for you, that sense of integrity that you have. My friend, my apostle, Jeffrey Carson, I see you watching today, my friend. You mean the world to me. You are my prayer warrior. You are my stabilizer. When things get a little shaky, I bless you, my man. And Kalisa Whitehead, my former student, and my sister in the Lord, we praise God for you. And we're going to move into the word of God. 
and we promise not to be and hold you too long, but we want to ask God to come in and help us and direct us and give us what he has ordained for we us to have at such a time as this. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You are the one Lord that hold this whole thing together. And we are so privileged, Lord, to be the sons and the daughters of you, the Most High God. We pray, God, that you be glorified, that your people be edified, and I promise me and I will be satisfied, Lord, as the word of God goes forth. Bless us now, Lord. Give us, Lord, the God factor that makes the difference. And God, we promise to lift you up and to give your name the glory and the praise. Once again, my brothers and sisters, praise the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I hear that in Detroit, you're up at 65 degrees, but I look out of my window here over the pool, the patio, and see the sun shining and the green trees, the green grass, birds in the trees. And I'm saying, man, what a beautiful day. So if we're in a pandemic, man, what a place to be in a pandemic in. And with this lovely woman of God that I have in a person of I call her Queen May, Glory be to God. So today I want to call your attention to our first Kings, the 18th chapter, starting at verse number 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. I like to take a, a from verse number 43 for our controlling thought. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. I would like to use for a controlling thought today is that when you look and see nothing, God says to look again. Once again, I want this topic to kind of radiate in your spirit. When you look and see nothing, God told me to tell you today to look again. Now, the context of this text really is, is dealing with uh, uh, the prophet killing 400 of uh, Baal's uh, followers, of worshipers. It also speaks to three and a half years where the same prophet prayed and there were no rain. And you see now in this text that he's praying again to release the land. That's not what I want to speak to you today about. What I want to speak to you today is that you got two men standing on Mount Carmel. One look through the natural eye and he sees nothing. And the prophet prostrate in prayer, look through the spiritual eye and he sees the unseeable. This tell me, my brothers and sisters, that the children of God has two ways to look. You can look through the natural eye like the servant did and see nothing. Or you can look through the spiritual eye like the prophet did and see the unseeable. Those of us, my brothers and sisters, who look through the natural eye, base their relationship with God 
on what they see, what they hear, what they smell, what they taste, and what they feel. Seeing for them is believing. If they don't see it, they don't believe it. And my brothers and sisters, that's 80% of the world of Christendom. We all waiting to see before we believe. We get it from old Dalton Thomas. When the Lord, after his resurrection, came back into the room with the disciples, Thomas wasn't there. And when Thomas came, they told him that the Lord had arose from the grave. And Thomas said, look, until I can put my hands in the nail print in his hand and thrust my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Eight days later, the Lord came and, 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 and the Lord said to Thomas, stick your finger in my nail print hand and thrust your hand into my side. And Thomas fell down and said, oh, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those that believe in me who have not seen. God is saying, when you look and see nothing, look again. So we see, and I think in the early part of my salvation, God showed me something. He showed me that everything that we see, the moon, the stars, the trees, the water, the green grass, was made by something that we don't see. In other words, this natural world was made by a spiritual world. The source of everything that we need is not in the natural world. I've learned to stop trying to buddy up to people to get ahead. I've learned to stop trying to, you know, uh, what old folks say, you know, nose, brown nose to get ahead. I've learned to treat people right, but not to try to convince people that they would give me a promotion or an elevation. I've learned to look to the hills from which come in my help. That's the God in the spiritual realm. In other words, my brothers and sisters, what you see is not more real than what you don't see. What you don't see is more real than what we see. We are to understand that this natural world ain't where it is. It's everything that we need is in the spiritual realm. That's why God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's why God say, seek me and you shall find me if you seek me with your whole heart. God knows that there is nothing in this world. When you look with your natural eye, my brothers and sisters, let me talk personally. When I look with my natural eye, all I see is hopelessness. All I see is limitations. All I see is things that I cannot do. All I see is my children on the, on the rocks going crazy. All I see is my home being destroyed. All I see is hopelessness. Therefore, God is coming today and he's telling you because I know I'm not by myself. When you look and see nothing, God is saying to look again. Now, let me turn to you, 2 Kings the sixth chapter, just for a minute, and read verse number 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host of come past the city, both with horses and chariots. I believe this was the Assyrians. And his servant said unto him, Master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and asked the Lord, I pray thee, open up his eyes, take the scales from off his eyes that he may see. Because when he looked the first time, he didn't see nothing. Now Elijah has him looking again. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, 
And behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire, angels, warring angels, around Elijah. My brothers and sisters, this tells you that there's a natural eye and there's a spiritual eye. If you and I are going to ever live in peace of, of God, we got to develop the spiritual eye. We got to get over the things that we see. I can recall the children of Israel when God told them to walk around the walls, seven times, Jericho walls. I can, I can just see that when they walked around there three times, they didn't see nothing because they were looking in the natural. If they would have stopped, they would have never seen what God had for them in the spiritual. The walls of Jericho came down. I can see Abraham. God promised him a son. Say that the nation, he's going to have nations. And he's 75 and 25 years later, he's still looking and he's seeing nothing. If he would have stopped in year 25, he would have never seen what God had for him in the spiritual. Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel. My brothers and sisters, I can see those of us who've been sick for a long time. And all we see in the natural, all we hear in the natural, the doctor saying, ain't nothing else we can do. You can't stop in the natural. You got to remember that the word of God says, I was wounded for your transgressions. I was bruised for your iniquities and the chastisement of your peace was upon me. And with my stripes, you are healed. You can't stop looking until you see what the spiritual has to offer. So sometimes you can't just look one time. As we go back to the text, you say, he said to go and look again. And he said, I look and I see that Elijah told him to look seven times. My brothers and sisters, sometimes it takes time for your blessing to come from the spiritual to the natural. I know y'all don't believe what I'm saying. Sometimes it takes time for that transition. If you can recall Daniel, Daniel prayed to the Lord. And after he prayed, he fasted 21 days waiting on his answer. And then Gabriel came and Gabriel told Daniel, say, Daniel, the day that you prayed, the day that you asked, God sent me with your answer, but I was stopped and hindered by the Prince of Persia, Satan himself, in the air, they fighting, holding me back from getting to you to give you the answer from God. And then God sent Michael, the archangel, who broke all of that foolishness up and allowed Gabriel to come on through to give the answer to Daniel. My brothers and sisters, we don't know what's happening when we ask God. We don't know why many times there's a waiting period. But what God is saying to us today, when you look and see nothing, you don't stop looking. You keep acknowledging that God is God and God could do anything but fail and anything but lie. If he says, by his stripes we are healed. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to hold on to that statement until the end. Job said, though he slay me, yet would I trust him. And I'm saying, if God said it, if I found it in his word, that he said that he was going to do something, I'm going to look until he does it. Because it's important to know that your strength is built on the integrity of the word of God. If we are children of God and what God says, it doesn't mean anything, then we are living the most miserable lives that we can. We need to do what the world does. Go and make your own blessings. But we stand in here leaning and depending and trusting in God because we know that if God said it, it shall come to pass. Now, I got three things I want to say before I close out. And those three, these three things are going to help you to see better. The first thing is that you have to have faith in God. 
My brothers and sisters, that's foundational. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Some of us have stopped believing in God, so we have increased our tithes and we have increased shouting. We have increased singing and doing a work for God. But God says without faith, it's impossible to please him. For those that come to God must believe that he is, comma, he is what, Brother Andrew? He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a way maker. He's the one that will bring your high places down. He will straighten your crooked. He will fill your valley. He will save your family. He will heal you. You must believe that he is when you come to him. If you don't believe that he is, then stop looking, stop coming. And then he say, he is comma, and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him, to them that stop, don't stop looking, to them that don't stop calling, to them that know that God is alive and he's hearing our prayers. We may not understand everything, but we got to know that this God that we serve will never leave us nor forsake us. If we don't know that, then we ain't gonna look again. If we don't know that God is a healer, then we're going to stop looking to be healed. My brothers and sisters, God is saying, when you look and see nothing, don't believe your lying eyes. Look again. So this thing about faith, here, here is one thing that, that really knocks us off our, our, our axis. We try to go to God to heal us from cancer when we haven't even learned to have God to heal our sinus headache. My brothers and sisters, faith is nothing but a muscle. You got to exercise your faith. You got to start off with small stuff. It's like a guy going into a gym and he goes over to 250 pounds bar and he tried to lift it up. He can't handle that. He cannot handle that because his muscles have not been built up. They teach us when we go in the gym, you start with the fives and then you go with the 10 and then you go with 20 and 25. Then you're up to 100 and then you're up to 200. The muscle has to be built up. And my brothers and sisters, we need not kid ourselves. We got to get this thing about faith right because without it, we can't please God. And if we're not pleasing God, God ain't really moving in our lives like we desire him to move. So we have to begin to ask God about things that we can believe God for. Start off with God, send somebody that I may witness to today to tell of your goodness. Let God do that and build off of that. Lord, send a word, Lord, in, in the Bible that tells me what I should do about X, Y, and Z. Open up the Bible and then, then you're building up your faith. You're getting stronger. I have a girlfriend in Detroit who has this book she called Ask God. And what she do, what, what she uh, place in here is prayers and she date them. And then at the end of the year, she comes back and see if they were answered. And all of these pages with prayer, many of them have been answered, but you know how God does it. He don't raise a red flag. He just ease that gift, that blessing into your lives. So at the end, she has all of her prayers that she asked and that were answered. It builds her faith. So she gets stronger, my brothers and sisters. And when she's strong, she can ask and trust God for anything. And this is where we are. Stop asking for stuff that you can't believe God for. And stop wasting uh, time until you get to something so big that you know you don't have the faith to ask God and to believe God to do. So our daily lives, my brothers and sisters, should be walking in faith, asking God, challenging God, writing it down, how God has answered prayer. That makes the invisible God visible for you. So that means you can walk a life 
that's pleasing to God because you believe in God. The next thing I want to uh, bring to you, the second thing rather, is uh, we must be able to pray. If we don't pray, we don't stay. Somebody said, if we don't fast, we can't last. Praying is simply talking to God and letting God talk to us. One of the problems that I found is that I get there, man, I'm praying and I'm praying. And one time God told me, Milton, shut up. Let me talk to you. And God began to talk to me and minister to me. We got to, they can't forget that God can talk, y'all. And he talks to you and he ministers to you and he encourages you to go on. He lets you know that I got your back. And when you walk out of that prayer room, my brothers and sisters, you got a different view. You see what you didn't see. You understand what you didn't understand because you had a talk with your God. And then, you know, the devil don't mind us talking about God. Glory be to God. We can have as many Bible classes as we want, but he doesn't ever want to see you and I sitting down talking to God because he know that and God is a consuming fire. And as you get closer to God, God burns off everything that's not like God. And you come out more holy. You come out with your eyesight more keen and your ears more depth to hear and to see what God is saying to you in this time. The blessed thing that we have as children of God, those of you who don't believe in it, I think you need to pray. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Spirit of God. You see, when you have the Spirit of God, you have a spiritual connection from the natural world to the spiritual world. Glory be to God. Those things, when you look and see nothing, when you go into your prayer, when you go and meet your spiritual connection, he will show you things that you can't see. He will show you that what you are asking for is already given unto you. So the spiritual connection that we have is so powerful that when, 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 when you're sick, you don't have to go all around all these churches to find a healer. Take time, spend time with the healer that's in you. For the word says, by his stripes, you are healed. If you need money, you don't have to be kind and, 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 and going to people and asking them to give you money. The spirit that's in you, the earth is his. The earth, the whole earth, the cattle on a thousand hills are all his. When you spend time with him, he'll make people come and give you what you need. You don't have to ask nobody. All you need to do is make contact with the God that's inside of you. It's your spiritual connection. And I tell you about prayer. Prayer, man, there's something about prayer that's hard, y'all. When you go in there and get on your knees, it's almost like a rocket at Cape Canaveral pushing up and all of those boosters are kicking up to break the power of gravity that's holding it back. When it gets further up, you, lose, you use less boosters. When it gets into space, you're floating. The same thing with prayer. Man, I get on my knees and I'm going to personalize this. Man, my knee hurt. I'm thinking about uh, what I left over there. I didn't eat. I'm thinking about uh, the election. I'm thinking all these things, man, that's the gravity. But I dare you to stay and just begin to call on the name of Jesus. Just begin to give a few hallelujahs. Just begin to speak in another tongue, a prayer language, and watch God take you and move you from this natural atmosphere and take you into a spiritual ram with him. And man, when you are up there with him, the Bible says that God has made Jesus to sit in heavenly places, far above the principalities, far above every demon. And then it says that he made us to sit together with him 
in heavenly places. The problem why you and I can't see, we're sitting in the wrong seats. If you keep sitting down here on earth and don't pray, all you see is limitations. All you feel is pain. But when you take that trip and go up with prayer into that heavenly place, and sit in your right seat. You see how I'm looking at myself? Man, when you're looking at Jesus, eyeballing Jesus, man, you ain't worrying about no sickness. Man, you ain't worrying about pain. You ain't worrying about your cantankerous husband or your outlandish, uh, uh, your crazy wife. You ain't worrying about nothing because you're sitting next to Jesus. Every now and then for us to be strengthened, we got to take that trip, you all. We got to leave from earth and go to glory through prayer. And as prayer, God would fix it. God would fix that thing every time. So when you walk in a prayer room, you might be all burning down. But when you come out, you're coming out. The problems are still there. I mean, that bill is still on the table. That wife is still crazy in other rooms room, but the Lord will mount you up on wings of an eagle. And man, you, you, you are so high that the problems can't touch you. That's the power of God being in you in and through prayer. So my brothers and sisters, you got to take time to pray, to connect with your spiritual connection. Some of y'all are proud of being connected to the governor and the mayor. Some of y'all are proud of being connected to the president. But my greatest glory is being connected to the God of the universe, the God who have created everything, the God that's in control of everything. I can go in his room. I can go in his presence. Boy, y'all better leave me alone. I'm about to have church all by myself. I can go before God and speak to him and he can speak to me. Brothers and sisters, that would kill every part of blindness that a man would have. That would kill every doubt. That would give you the courage, the faith to believe in God. But if you ain't praying, you ain't staying. You just as blind as a bat. So we got to spend more time with God. And the last thing I want to speak to you about is the word of God. Without the word of God, you can't see. Even faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. When you look and don't see nothing, you ain't looking at the word because the word is always going to tell you what God has availed for you in the word of God. So we got to understand that there is no power like the power of the word. The Bible say in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Everything that Jesus said, you can take it to the bank because the word, he can't lie. He's immutable. He cannot change. Whatever he said, he has to do it. So when you look, and you don't see that he have done nothing, it's on you to look again. Because Jesus said, my word has gone out and it can't return unto me void. So when sickness come upon me, I don't receive it. I send sickness back because the word of God says I'm healed. So I ain't even, I take that word of God and send it back to God himself. I say, holy Jesus, you said it. By your stripes, I'm healed. I see what the doctor's saying, but I'm looking at you. Now, if you said it, then I believe it. And if you said it, I'm settled with it. So the word of God is that powerful. It must do what he says it should do. My brothers and sisters, I remember God getting into the ship with his disciples, and he told them, let's go to the other side. Hmm. And he went in the boat and fell asleep. So as they got in the middle of the water, the sea, the lake, whatever they were in, strong storm winds came and the boat was being filled with water. They were in jeopardy. It was about to capsize as they saw it. And Jesus in the boat sleeping. And I believe it was old Peter went and shook Jesus and said, Jesus, master, cares not that we perish, 
And Jesus got up. I, and I see in my eyes, he had mad in his eyes. He getting, you waking me out of my sleep. He got up and he spoke to the winds. He spoke to the waves, saying, peace be still. And then he turned around and looked at the 12. And he said, oh, ye of little faith. My brothers and sisters, that blew my mind. Because what would I have done if I was there? When water coming in and we're about to drown? And, and he's back here sleeping. And I know in him, it's the power to make everything all right. And I'm going to sit there and, and wake him up. I'm waking him up. But what God was saying to me, he dropped in my spirit. He said, Milton, he said, remember, I told them that we were going to the other side. Glory be to God. Storms coming up, winds, lightning, water in the boat can't change what I said. They didn't have faith in what I said. They rather believe in what they saw than believe in what I said. And he said to me, the same thing with you, my brother, my son, I told you that I was going to heal you. And it doesn't matter what tribulation comes. It doesn't matter what, what the doctor said. It only matters what I said. So when you look and see nothing, that's what the doctor said. You look again. That's what I said. For my word has gone forth. Milton, I can't even stop it. I can't even turn it around. It must hit the target. God has a target on us. And he sent his word to hit the target. And my brothers and sisters, if you don't look again, you're going to dodge yourself until Christ comes back and you're going to be asking him, well, why didn't you do? He said, if you'd have stayed still and looked one more time, you would have been healed in that life like you were healed in this one. My brothers and my sisters, I don't know about you, but in my conclusion, I'm going to look until God heals my body. I'm going to look until God heals my home. I'm going to look until my children, I see my children coming down the aisles, giving their lives to Christ with the understanding of what the scriptures have said. I'm going to look until God fix me. I'm going to look until God do what his word says to do. I ain't finished you all, but I'm going to stop because I want to stop with good time. But I'm telling you today, I want you to think about this. God said, when you look and see nothing, that's 80% of the world of Christendom. He said, don't stop. Don't believe your lying eyes. He says to look again. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your visitation. We lift you up. We glorify you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for this word to tell us we do have hope, Lord, and our hope doesn't come from man, but it comes from you. Lord, we thank you. We pray, God, that your people were edified. We pray, God, that you were glorified, and may we, and I will leave you today satisfied, Lord, that we were used by you to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. My brothers and sisters, until next Friday, if the Lord say so, see you at 12 noon. Love you guys. Bye-bye.